Hello and welcome back to Kentucky Home Garage. Uh, today, is, uh, today I have a 2004 uh, Honda CRV with a VTEC engine and uh, I have a check engine light on with a code uh, P2646. Let's see that. Now, this is the uh, rocker arm oil control valve stuck on or off. The um, I'll show you my diagnostic process, how I'm going to approach this. Now, in our, let me get this a little closer. What we got here is um, basically this unit. This unit. In, well, it has a um, oil sil control solenoid and also has a oil oil pressure pressure switch. So this is a uh, this is a solenoid and this is a pressure switch. Now, when uh, computer energizes the uh, the uh, the solenoid, we should have a oil flowing through the uh, through this unit and uh, this uh, oil pressure switch. It's normally Closed, which uh, uh, computer uh, sent a 12 volt signal to a pressure switch, and um, when the oil pressure builds up in the system, it will open up the switch, and then um, it, it will, it will it, then we have a 12 volts. So what it means uh, that uh, on on, a, on our scan data, what we're going to see is a zero volt means on and the 12 volts is off. Uh, this system uh, it's called a variable timing and lift uh, electronic control VTEC VTEC system basically the way it works there's a two there's a cam lobe on an intake uh, uh, cam that one is smaller one is bigger and uh, uh, at the idle the intake uh, valves are, are pushed by a smaller lobe and uh, at a higher RPM, computer is going to energize this system, and uh, the bigger lobe is going to get locked with, with a smaller lobe, and it's going to push a uh, intake valve longer period of time, and uh, that's going to improve the gas mileage and, uh, and uh, horsepower and RPM, or uh, I mean, uh, 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 not RPM, but uh, basically the horsepower and, uh, and uh, 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 gas mileage. So now, uh, what I uh, I took the car for the test drive, and uh, I uh, observed two PIDs. I observed the uh, command from the computer to solenoid, and also I observed my uh, oil pressure switch input. And uh, every time when a computer energizes the solenoid, my uh, my uh, uh, input on the on the switch should go to off. But it doesn't. It stays on all the time. There is no changes. So now we'll have to. I'm gonna uh, uh, with my uh, scan tool. I can do bidirectional control, and I can actually energize. Uh, uh, I can command to uh, energize this solenoid, and then we'll see what kind of uh, input we have on on our switch. So. Uh, In order to do that, first what I have to do, I have to uh, erase my uh, my um, uh, trouble code. Now on this tool. To get into the, uh, let me let me just get the camera in my hands. Okay, so now, in order to get to uh, bidirectional control, I'm going to inspection. And I'm going to have a VTEC test. 
Is this a good oil pressure switch? Yes. Start the engine. Keep engine above 3000 RPM. Now we can still, you can see that solenoid is still off while my switch is on. Now it will do a couple more, more tests and then the computer is going to energize the uh, solenoid. And then we should see those changes on our pressure switch as well. Okay, so now we're going to... Okay, now we can see the computer energizes the solenoid on. At this time, at this point, this uh, uh, switch should go to off. If we have enough pressure in the system and if everything goes or works okay, this should be off, but it's, it stays on. Okay, so now the uh, did not pass the test. It gives us a possible options. It could be a solenoid valve failure. Cinema valve control line open or short, oil pressure signal line short or oil uh, blocked. Now we need to adjust all these uh, uh, issues before we replace our unit. So I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to go to live data. The first I want to look my uh, sensor my switch I'm sorry okay so now we can see our switch is on so sorry again when it has a zero volts the switch is on so what are the po uh, possible options but the you know, reasons why it's, it's, it stays on all the time of course it could be malfunctioning in the system maybe the cylinder is not opening we don't have enough oil pressure or um, it can be a plugged up passage waves but we have to now we're going to address our electrical part where um, we're going to the, the, the switch has a two, two um, uh, wires coming in I'll just show you down here the brown and yellow is my ground and blue and black is a 12 volt signal to a pressure switch. Now we don't have to worry much about ground circuit because it, it, but I'll address it, I'll, I'll check that as well. But anyway, because it's, um, it's a zero volts all the time, uh, we don't have to worry about that. It's, uh, the, our, our ground side is okay, but I'll check it. Now, other option could it be that we actually have a short to ground here and the something is pulling this down to zero and the uh, computer sees uh, zero volts and, and, and reads that as, a, as a on. So uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to check the voltage and I, I'm going to back probe my uh, control wire and uh, we should probably see zero volts. Then once we unplug our sensor, we're going to open up the circuit. That's what should oil pressure do when um, it and uh, what the uh, oil pressure switch should do when once the oil pressure it should open up this um, uh, pressure switch it should open the circuit and they will go back to it should go to, to 12 volts so now when, um, I'm going to back probe my uh, control wire I'm going to unplug the sensor and uh, if I see 12 volts we should also see uh, off on our scan tool and that's going to address our then we will know that we don't have any open or short in our um, in our uh, control wire. If it's actually open, uh, we would not have this problem. It would, the computer would see 12 volts all the time and they would read as off. So open is not the uh, problem here. So let's go back under the hood and, uh, and uh, check that out. Okay, I have my uh, signal wire back probed. That is my uh, blue and, and black wire. Now I have my uh, multimeter, my, positive, my negative lead is on the battery ground, my positive lead is down at, uh, at the signal wire. I'll show you guys later on where it's located. And uh, we see a 
zero volts as is expected that means the uh, switch is on and uh, our scan tool shows on now I'm gonna unplug the sensor I'm gonna open up the circuit this, that would be the same as what the switch would do if we have enough oil pressure if the system works that it should or if, if our pressure switch functioning so uh, I'm gonna reach down and unplug it Okay. You can see my uh, switch is my uh, scan tool is off. So it's off, and uh, and I have a. Uh, Twelve point, twelve point, twelve uh, volts on my on my signal wire. So with this test, we know that we don't have any wiring issues on our signal wire from signal wire from uh, our pressure switch all the way up to the computer. So the computer reads correctly, reads twelve volts as on. I mean zero volts as on, and twelve volts as uh, off, and uh, that responds. Now I'm gonna. Take my uh, test light. I got a. I have my uh, test light connected to battery ground. Actually, so I have to put on battery positive. And I'm gonna I'm gonna check my uh, my ground side on my on my pressure switch. And that is a, uh, a brown and yellow wire. So I'm just gonna touch the connector. I got it unplugged. And I don't I don't jam anything in there. I just I just touch it. Lightly. I don't. I don't want to stick this too too uh, too much in there, and then damage my my. Uh, well, let's see. Let me get a little closer. What I'm going to do? I'm just going to touch my my ground ground wire, and my test light real light has give us a. Uh, Okay, there we go. So now we can see that we have a good ground on our pressure switch as well. So, uh, so that part of the uh, of the system is being checked. Now I need to address my uh, my solenoid. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use a lab scope and also I'm going to use a uh, current clamp. I will uh, let me. Uh, I will. Hey, one channel. I'm going to use my. Uh, this is going to be this is my solenoid. So I got a black wire, and I have a uh, green and yellow wire. So the black is ground, and this is a power side switched. Computer send the power, 12 volts to the solenoid to control it. I will take the current clamp. I mean, I can clamp it on either one of these wires, and I'm going to observe my uh, current flow through my through my system through my circuit and also I'm going to back probe I'm going to use the T pins but be careful with this don't cross these T pins I'm going to I'm going to back probe black and uh, and the green and yellow wire and uh, then I will uh, go back in a car do bidirectional control so I want to I want to check my uh, current flow and also I want to check my voltage to make sure I uh, I don't have any voltage drop when I command my solenoid on and off. So, the way I like to do, I like to, I, I like to back probe both, uh, you know, control wire and ground side, and I can watch that on one on one channel. I, I hope this makes sense because I don't want to have a separate channel for the ground and a separate channel from uh, for my control wire for my feed. So I'm just going to use one channel, and if I have for, uh, my 12, 13, 14 volts. On, on my on my uh, on my uh, lab scope, then I know that my ground and my control wire, my feed is okay. So uh, I'm gonna set all that up, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's my uh, here's my uh, unit here. There's a pressure uh, pressure switch. There's a solenoid, and actually to take this off, you're gonna have three bolts in the back of it. It's it's pretty easy to do. It just uh, 
unbolted and you, you, you should be able to slide the whole unit out. Now here's my M clamp. I have it clamped around my control wire from the, from the computer. And I'm going to observe my amplitude draw. And uh, I have my uh, test leads connected to my... Uh, there you go. So I have my uh, ground on my, on my ground wire. And uh, I have a, my uh, other lead on the on the on the uh, control wire. So now that's going to be my my uh, yellow channel and my no, that's going to be my green channel and uh, yellow channel is going to be my amplitude draw. So um, I'm going to do the same bidirectional control test and uh, see what kind of results we're going to have here. Okay, guys, I have to apologize, but as I was filming this live, I didn't realize that my memory card was full, so I did not get this alive but anyway I was able to save this uh, waveform so what do we what we have here is my green green trace is my uh, power and ground from uh, from the computer as we can see I have a 14.4 volts coming to my solenoid my power my ground is down to 0.01 volts so that's that's a good ground and my uh, yellow lead is my uh, amplitude draw and I have uh, 80 millivolts of uh, which uh, my uh, scale was set 100 millivolts was 1 amp so I'm drawing 0.8 amps of current so uh, everything looks okay uh, the only option now is to uh, take the unit down and uh, and uh, check if my screen is clogged up and if not then I will just have to replace the unit and uh, repeat the test so uh, I'll be back Hey guys, this is a quick shot of your solenoid. I would suggest to do this when the engine is cold because you're very close to exhaust manifold. I took the front right wheel off to uh, to get to it, and here's what you you're gonna have these three bolts. I got one removed. There's one. There's a three of them, but I really cannot get my hands and the camera in the in the same position. So I hope, so guys, you can see there's three bolts right there. One is already out. So that's what you gotta unbolted to get the uh, solenoid out of out of it. Okay, I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, I got my uh, new solenoid back in. Again, I would really suggest doing this job with the engine cold. It's really, really close to uh, exhaust manifold. There's the, uh, there's the new solenoid. And, uh, you know, once you do this, get connect everything and make sure to get all the wires nice and snug. I got. I had to use some cable ties to get back everything that needs to be and uh, you know start the car and check for oil leaks make sure got no leaks on on oil and uh, we're gonna we're gonna repeat uh, our test again okay let's repeat the test to see what happens Keep it at 3000 RPM. There we go. Okay, cylinder is on, switch is off, that's the way it should be. So far so good. Still on and off. Okay, system normal. It's looking good. Well, this was a fun project. Uh, everything looks good, it's fixed. So now, um, let's see what you guys can do with your home tools to kind of uh, diagnose this problem and, 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 uh, and fix it. If you're going to have some kind of a scan tool that can read live data and one of those it's like something like this uh, it's going to give you uh, live data as you, as you drive the car uh, it's not perfect but it will, it will do. I mean I, I hope that you know sometimes this kind of a tool is not going to give you all the PIDs that you're going to need to, to look but I hope it is going to give you for this but uh, uh, so the first when you have this code so we need to check our wiring then make sure our wires are, are okay so when you look your uh, this is this is our old uh, 
solenoid and the, and the pressure switch. So here's your pressure switch. So on this pressure switch you're going to have a uh, 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 blue and black wire and uh, brown and yellow. So your blue and black wire, it's your signal wire from the computer to, 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 to the switch. So you have to have your scan tool look at your data, look at your switch, turn the key on and uh, it's supposed to say on because the switch is closed and, and pulls the voltage down to zero and uh, on is zero volts means on. That's what the computer is reading. So to, uh, to make sure that you got a good uh, signal wire, unplug your sensor, your voltage should go up to 12 volts and the scan tool is going to change from on to off. So that's going to give you uh, information that your signal wire is okay, your computer is responding to a signal from the pressure switch correctly. Uh, one other thing you have to make sure that you have a good ground on your on the switch. So as you uh, you can you can back probe your um, uh, uh, brown and uh, yellow wire, or you can unplug it, take a test light, connect it to battery positive. Just touch the very end of your connector. Don't jam it in there. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna jam it, damage your your uh, your connector. So just touch it and uh, your test light should light that indication a good ground. Now if it comes to the solenoid that's a little bit tough because you know I have a M clamp, I had a lab scope, I have bi-directional controls. You guys don't have any of that stuff which you will have to do. Uh, the only thing to do it is to back probe your wires the same as I did and take the car for the test drive. Okay and look at your voltage. And um, uh, once the computer energizes the uh, solenoid, you're gonna see your uh, you know look at your voltmeter, and uh, you should have your battery voltage at that point. I mean that is the only way of doing it, other than uh, having a you know fancy tool with a bidirectional control. Uh, one other thing, uh, make sure to change oil after you do this, and make sure I cannot emphasize enough. Make sure you. Put a, you use a correct oil. This this calls for an, uh, um, I think I can I'm not sure. I have to look, but uh, you have to you have to make sure that you have a correct type of oil because if you don't have, they can they can mess things up big time. So uh, so that's about it. I mean I'm not sure what else I can uh, I can say about uh, uh, like um, if uh, if you don't have bidirectional control like on this tool uh, when I did. Um, uh, like nice thing about this one as well that I could actually record. I'm not sure how the camera is going to pick this up, but this is record data bef before repair. Uh, let me play it. Now you can see when I my switch is my solenoid is on, but the switch is on. So that means the switch is not responding. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. So this switch is on, but I mean a solenoid is commanded on, but switch is on. So that that is not the way it should be. Your, your, your switch should turn off once the uh, solenoid turns on. So uh, let's now let's go one that I did after after repair and uh, play. Now you can see there's a off and then it's on. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Should be one more time when the solenoid is commanded on. If not, I'll have to, there is go on, and now the switch is off. So this is way it needs to be. So I'm not sure why you guys, did you guys be able to see that, but this is what you're gonna see on your on your scan tool. So it depends what kind of scan tool you have. You're gonna look your data, and when your when your uh, anything up below 3,000 RPM, this VTEC system is not. It's not a, it's not working. The computer does not co command it on. So at that point, as you, as you like a, turn the car on just at the, at the idle, your switch supposed to be on, but your solenoid is supposed to be off. As you drive down the road, as you increase your RPM over 3,000, that's when it, that's the time when the computer is gonna command the solenoid on, and then uh, then if everything works the way it should, the solenoid should say on but switch is supposed to say off because remember the switch is always on 
and it pulls that voltage down to zero, but once the pressure build up, once the, once the cylinder is open, it's going to build up that pressure, it's going to open up the switch, it's going to open the circuit, and then it's, you're going to have a 12 volts. There's going to be no more ground on your, on your, on your switch. It's going to be 12 volts and the computer is going to uh, uh, read as, as off. I hope this makes sense. Uh, I know it's a little bit too much, but um, uh, you really want to check all this before you replace your component because if you have any kind of a, any kind of um, wiring issues, you know, changing components not going to help. And you could see uh, to to change your to change your valve, uh, all you got to do, you know, disconnect disconnect your uh, connectors. And at the and, the and at the back in the back, you're going to see three bolts. They're 10, 10, 10 millimeters. Just take them off, you know, put new piece on, new part on bolted back and uh, I could not film that because it's just impossible to get the camera and the hands and all that in a, it's such a such a uh, small area but of course uh, in the moment thing I would really recommend if you want to do this change change this uh, when the engine is cold because it's so close to exhaust manifold you're gonna burn yourself so um, this is it guys I hope this was informative so I hope somebody can use this to diagnose this problem thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel I do my best to explain all this to the best of my ability. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.